think tanks. Um, think tanks. You may have never heard this term before, uh, but think tanks are organizations, nonprofit, typically nonprofit organizations, that are funded by big dollar donors. And they are essentially what I would call idea factories, slogan factories. Big dollar donor comes to them like Coors, uh, which is a foundation, which is a company actually that, that manufactures beer out of the, the, the Rockies, Coors. Or uh, Philip Morris, which is a cigarette uh, manufacturer, comes to them and says, look, we want policy introduced into Congress that's more favorable to us and less favorable to the people who are trying to sue us because we, our product is killing them. So, but we can't just go to Congress and tell them that we need some, we need a buffer between us and, and, and Congress. And we don't need to just say we don't want to be sued. We want to say something that everybody can agree with if they hear it. It's going to sound good to them on the surface. I'm, I'm, I'm simplifying, but I'm summarizing it, and I'm inviting you to look at think tanks. Because that's a source that when we think about who the enemy is, that's not even in the realm of our consideration in most cases, right? What is a think tank? Well, I'm going to give you the names of some of the think tanks to start with. And, and I, I'm not asking you in the sense of responding, but I'm, I'm just going to read some off and ask you, have you ever heard of them? You can respond in the chat room. We'll get to it. But have you ever heard of the Heritage Foundation? The Heritage Foundation. Have you ever heard of the Brookings Institute? Have you ever heard of the Urban Institute? Now, there are some uh, think tanks that lean to the left, and there are some think tanks that lean to the right. When I say to the left, I mean typically what you would think of as democratic policy, democratic, as in the Democratic Party philosophy ideology. But then there are think tanks that lean to the right. Generally speaking, the media, and I was just looking at this last night when it's quoting studies, uh, and then there's some center uh, think tanks or centrist think tanks, which means they try to be in the middle. Generally speaking, when the main media, meaning ABC, NBC, CBS, and CNN, when they're quoting statistics and studies, they're quoting from these think tanks, right? Think, these think tanks that um, are center or to the left. And that's an objective fact, okay? Mostly so that what you hear uh, being quoted on the main media channels are gonna, it's gonna come from the center or it's gonna come from the slight left. However, when you talk about conservative politics, when you talk about the, the policy, and the reason why I brought up the Heritage Foundation, because th there are many different ones, but I, I think I wanna spend some time discussing the Heritage Foundation as an unseen hand. Uh, we know about the Reagan revolution that happened in, in 18, right, 18, 1980s, right, when, when, when he was elected and he defeated Jimmy Carter. A lot of the policies that, that came into place that, that were proposed and that were ultimately enacted into law, what you should know is that those policies actually came from the Heritage Foundation. There were ideas that were cooked up uh, and support, that were supported by big dollar donors which we're going to talk about in just a moment. And then the think tanks sent those to or proposed those to people who were running for office, people who were in positions serving in the administration. And 60% of the ideas that the Heritage Foundation began to develop in the late 70s and into the 80s became the law of the land and still is the law of the land. Now, why do I tell you that? Because I think of all of the, the, the think tanks out there, both center-leaning and left-leaning and right-leaning, the Heritage Foundation is very strong, very influential, very powerful. Uh, there's a guy named Paul Wyrick who was like a key personality who created, helped to create the Heritage Foundation back in 1973. And folks, those of you who are inclined to fact-check me, this is what I want you to do. Please check and make sure that that attorney Gurley, that pastor Gurley, that instructor Gurley is not just giving you a bunch of stuff, but uh, there's, there's, a, there's an organization called Source.com, Source.com, uh, or Source.org, 
you can write that down. I hope there's a place in your outline for notes. I hope that you write that down and go check this out. And I'll get to that more in just a moment. But in, if you go to source.com or source.org, which, whichever one it is, it tells you who these different think tanks are. And more importantly, it tells you who's actually funding them. Okay, because that's really, when you want to know, if you, if, if you hear something and you don't know whether it's actually good or bad, whether it's something that we should support or not support, ultimately, if you're being dutiful and if you're being um, objective and, and if you're being academic, you go all the way to the end and you look at who's funding. And then you have some idea in terms of whether you should support that source or that entity or that policy or not. And actually, the name, I, I just pulled up the sheet. It's source, sourcewatch.org. That's sourcewatch.org. Now, these think tanks, they come up with names that are very benign. When I say benign, it means it's, it sounds non-threatening on the surface. But then you get into what they're actually about. You're like, well, I'm not with that. But if, if you heard the name on the face, and this is by design, you would think, wow. Well, they must be up to good. Now, let me give you some examples. And this information that I'm about to share with you, you can find this on sourcewatch.org. Okay. The Americas, well, I'm sorry, the, the American Trial uh, the Torts Reform Act. Uh, let me I back up. I said I was going to give you the name of an organization, but I want to give you the name of a law that was passed or proposed by one of these entities. The American Torts Reform Act which said that you can't have a bunch of ambulance chasers out there filing lawsuits against innocent doctors, people who try the best and sometimes make mistakes. Uh, this whole thing called of tort reform. Tort is a civil wrong. And if, if your doctor commits malpractice and you sue him, you're suing him for a tort as opposed to a crime. A tort is a civil wrong. So the American Torts Reform Act Sounds good on the surface, right? You don't want your doctor being sued for every little thing. But when you get down to it and you see who's actually pushing this, who's actually behind this, you see that Philip Morris was behind that. You know who Philip Morris is, right? The big tobacco maker. You see that uh, the Academy of uh, American Surgeons, you see all the people who have something to gain personally uh, or putting it out there as though, or hiding behind this, this title as though it's actually for the good of the people. And that's important because what we're trying to get to as it relates to black people is to understand who's really actually working for us and who's working against us. But it's not easy because it's not meant to be easy. And